Hey guys, it's Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my Retin-A Week 29 update. So I'm literally just for a moment hiding in my basement for my kids so that I can quickly film this video. Um, so in this video, just as usual, I will have up close photography of my skin as well as video footage in different lighting conditions. So you guys can really get a feel for what the texture is looking like and the pigmentation, etc. Um, disclosures before I start, I am age 33. I've never had any Botox or filler in my face. I've never had microneedling, PDO threads. Um, the only thing I've really had done to my face is two halo lasers in my life. And I had one after each of my pregnancies. My most recent one was probably about nine months ago now at this point. Um, and I did that primarily for pigmentation issues. However, both times I did have what would be considered an aggressive halo laser just because it is expensive. And I figure if you're going to do it, you may as well try and, you know, boost some of that collagen as well. So that is what I have had done. Um, I am, like I said, on week 29 of Retin-A. And at this point, I have definitely stopped having breakouts. However, um, if you have kind of seen my videos on my Retin-A progress since the beginning, you know that a problematic area for me of congestion is around my mouth, particularly on my vermilion border. So if I zoom in, like you can see kind of some marks from where I've had them. Um, and I literally have to like push my lip out for you guys to see these. But for example, there, I just pointed to one. It's like these tiny little just congested pores. Anyway, my point is I had mentioned in my six month update that I think that that area is just going to take a little bit longer to clear. And sure enough, I have, it's getting swollen right there on my lip. Now, I I do not pop acne on my face. However, because those ones on my vermilion border are so stubborn and they're not like open at all, they're totally like under the skin and they're just super tiny. I have in the past tried to pop them and it always backfires. So whenever they come out, it always like swells up like this and then my body basically reabsorbs it half of the time or the other half of the time they can kind of come to the surface, but it just is really interesting. Like I haven't seen very many people that get that on their vermilion border and it's not like I've had it my whole life. It really started, I'm going to say like shortly after I graduated from college and I was really like in my lip liner phase. Um, I remember I used to get a lot of congestion there from lip liner and then, you know, continued to wear lip liner for years. But even now I like don't wear lip liner anymore. And I, well, I shouldn't say I don't wear it anymore. I rarely wear lip liner, but I still get like those little kind of congested pores. Now, since I've started tretinoin, it is so much better because gradually so many of them have either been reabsorbed or they've come out of my skin. Um, but that is an area that even though I'm not breaking out anywhere else on my face, my lips right around that vermilion border are going to take a little bit longer. So, um... That is kind of my main update. I still am getting like randomly I will wake up and I will have significant peeling around my mouth area, but it's it's very like sporadic. So maybe I'll have it like once every couple weeks and then it will be fine the rest of the time. So what I did start doing because I've also had a little bit of dryness just beneath my eyes and I think it's because of, you know, season change. Um what I did start doing here the last couple nights is I um, bought some rosehip oil by the brand called The Ordinary. Um, it's a pretty well-known brand. And I've been adding like three drops to that to my moisturizer that I put on my face, neck, and chest just to see if I can kind of mitigate some of that peeling that's happening. Um, but that's pretty much, you know, at week 29 here, the only update. I've totally stopped breaking out with the exception of my very problematic area around my lips. I am having some just random sporadic peeling around my mouth and I've tried to mitigate that now by adding rosehip oil into my evening routine when I apply moisturizer after letting the Retin-A sit on my skin for 30 minutes. So um, as far as pigmentation issues go, um, I've been using the vitamin C serum now 
by dermatology and have definitely noticed some improvement. I still have, you know, like this age spot and I definitely have melasma on this um, part of my forehead. I think that part of my hyperpigmentation is just gonna resolve itself once summer is over. I do wear sunscreen every day, whether I'm inside or outside, whether it's rain or shine. Um, however, you know, melasma is very stubborn and it's something that can really be triggered by UVA rays, which, you know, when a sunscreen is broad spectrum, it protects you from both UVA and UVB rays. But if it's not broad spectrum, it generally just protects you from UVB rays. So even though I am wearing sunscreen, I generally don't reapply it. And so I think just in general, when, you know, winter or fall comes into play and I'm not, you know, out in the bright sun quite as much, I think that some of that will just kind of go away on its own. And, you know, I do, you know, I did go through a pregnancy. My son is not quite one and a half yet, but um, some of that I think will just resolve on its own hormonally. Uh, over time as well. So that is my update here for week 29. Um, and, you know, again, I've been just applying the Retin-A every night just as I have since week one or since night one, really. Um, and I am currently on the 0.1%. Um, let's go ahead now and get into some uh, video footage of my skin in four different lighting conditions, as well as up close photography of different areas on my face so you guys can really see what everything is looking like. As always, lighting condition number one is downstairs in my basement under can lighting and this will be the most flattering of all the lighting conditions. Lighting condition number two is still downstairs in my basement, but I'm in my bathroom, which uh, has lighting that's a slightly more blue tint. Lighting condition number three is in shaded natural light. This is the lighting condition that will be the least flattering of the four lighting conditions. It's one where you can really see all of the pigmentation and any blemishes will really be amplified. And my last of four lighting conditions is outside in direct sunlight. Um, the sun is a little lower in the sky here today, so it's definitely bringing out some of my puffiness from the morning. All right, and now let's just take a look at some up-close photography of some different angles of my face. All right, guys, so that's all that I have for you for my Retin-A Week 29 update. I uh, hope this update finds everyone doing really well. Speaking of sunscreens, I did just recently do a review on a Korean sunscreen haul that I did. So I have five days of Korean sunscreen. So be sure to check those videos out here um, on my channel. And yeah, until next time, I will talk to you guys very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.